Hello, welcome to the video for how do I use event dispatchers in Unreal Engine 4. Let me go ahead and run through our example again. We have our generic character. He's going to walk over the generic damage plate. He'll die. The door in front of us will open and then the level will restart. All of this is accomplished using event dispatchers where our death event is letting everything else know to go ahead and do something. So let's walk through on how we're going to do this. Let me go ahead and let's open up our character because our character is where we've set up the basic event dispatcher. So this right here is how we are using our event dispatcher. On the left hand side or wherever you put your panel here, you'll find event dispatchers at the bottom. It's pretty simple. When you click on the plus, it'll ask you the name of the event dispatcher. We can name it test D just so we can set this up. And if we were to look on the right, You'll see things such as new inputs, tooltip category, and if you want to copy the signature from an existing one. Event dispatchers can pass along information such as maybe damage amount or, you know, your normal variables. So nothing really special there. How we're using this in this case is just to notify other things that are happening by calling the generic, calling the generic death dispatcher. And this will then, with the see the little envelope, that means it's um, a delegate. It's going to go ahead and it's going to notify other things that this event happened. Only if they have subscribed to it, though. That is called binding, and that's what we're going to cover next. So, if we were to just use this how it is, and nothing was subscribed to it, nothing was bound to it, basically nothing is going to happen. However, this setup is, if the player is less than 100, sorry, the player has lost all their life, if it's true, it calls the generic death dispatcher and then it kills the player. So, the generic death dispatcher here, by calling it, if you drag it in and drop it, you have the call event. Now you could always just do generic death dispatcher and you'll see assign, bind, call, unbind all, and unbind event. And we'll cover each of these shortly. So, Wherever you have created the event dispatcher, you want to call it when it is time to let everything else know that this event has fired. Now, in your other events, they need to bind to it so that way they are listening for it. So we'll go ahead and we will open up our right here, which is our dispatcher map. And our map is what determines if we're going to reload the level. How we do that is we use the bind event node. Now, our player character, our generic character here, is where our event dispatcher is at. So we need to talk to our generic ca character using casting. This is all stuff we should know by now. And we're going to go ahead and bind an event to it, to the generic dispatcher. And then we bind an event to it using this node here. Now, it seems a little weird, but there is a way around this weird way of laying things out. We'll cover here in another node. But basically, if I was to recreate this, if I have my player character, whoops, that was a button I've never hit before. Let's try that again. There we go. If we have our player character here, which is where our generic death dispatcher is, and we bind event to it, you'll find that we can bind event to generic death dispatcher. And all you'll see here is just a normal node that we connect up the target is our player character, and then it's expecting an event. This is really simple. It's just a normal event that we add in. So if we were to add a custom event, because we call this, um, you know, handle death, you'll notice on the top right, we have an output for a delegate. And here we have an input for a delegate. We just connect them up. And basically what this is doing is Whenever this event is called, this event here is going to fire. And then we would just hook up our nodes like normal. Now, a way to not have these so close together, like if you notice, I have to put my event here, is to just basically add a secondary custom event to hand off. So like, let's say it's called handle death here, and then we'll connect this to player died, like this. And that's going to call my player died down here. So if I was to unhook this, 
move it over to you know wherever I want it on your screen. It's it you know wherever you want it. You know this is a player died notification event, and this is what we want to call when the player died. Then if we were to take this part here, cut it out, paste it here, and basically change it so it's like this. Now instead of having everything hooked up right underneath our bind, we just have it bound just to a call to our custom event down here. It adds in one extra custom event, which you see here, but it makes our code a little bit cleaner. Because imagine if, for example, you wanted your uh, heads up display to be bound to five or six different things. Well, having it just simply where it's this, these three nodes copy pasted a couple times is a lot better than having a chain off here than a chain off here. So this is a way to go ahead and get around it. Just simply bind it to another custom event. So what is going to happen here now that we've bound it is I just simply set up our display. I get our player character and then I bind player died to the generic death dispatcher. So now whenever the generic death dispatcher is called from our player character, anything that's bound to it is going to get notified automatically. This map right here, this load, this um, level blueprint, doesn't need to talk to the player character and ask it when they've died. It doesn't need to monitor the player's health. It just sits there and it waits. It does nothing. It's waiting for an, an email, a Twitter, a Facebook post. It's waiting for a direct message from the player character that something happened that it's listening for. And that's the great thing about event dispatchers. Now, if we check out the other ones, we will find our UMG here, and it's doing the same thing. It's basically waiting. It's binding to our generic dispatch, death dispatcher. And what it's going to do is simply display our game over screen. That's it. It Again, it doesn't have to query the player. The player is going to notify it when something happens. And then we have our door here, and our door basically has a timeline that's set to move it. And again, it's bound to the generic death dispatcher. It's not going to query again. It's just simply going to wait until it gets a direct notification from the player character that it should do something. And that right there is how we have one event on our player character that three things will get notified of without any other work needing to be done. Now let's say for example you have it where it's like a one-off event or it's a fire event or something where it should only happen once. You only want it to listen once. So in this case, let's say we only wanted the door to happen once and it wasn't in the event of player death, maybe the boss, we killed a boss, the boss died, now we want to notify the door should open. But once it's been opened, we no longer need to listen for that event because it's done. So we could go over here and for example, we have our player character what we can do is we can go ahead and we're going to unbind is what we want to do. So you want to grab here, we want to find our death event and we want to unbind the event from the dispatcher. And in that case we need to hook that event back up which is over here. Which is why remember in the previous example here we set up another basically a pass off node. This is where it would come in exact handy. So like um like here, here's actually a good example here. Let's go back to this one, we'll do it in this one. Let's say after we've already called the player died event, we no longer need to listen. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and take these, move them over. We'll go ahead and unbind generic death. Dispatcher right there. And then when we want to unbind, we'll go ahead and we'll call the handle death Whoops, <laughs> probably should have just, uh, that's a copy of it. Anyways, I can hook it back up over here, and then now it's set to unbind. So now, this generic handle death is set to bind when it starts up. Once it's actually called, this right here, it's going to unbind itself, and now it's no longer going to listen for that death event. And in addition to that, you have, whoops, I need to pull off the player. You have your unbind all, you have assign dispatcher, which basically what assign does is it automatically does your, see how we have our bind event and our custom node? All assign does is take our bind event and automatically assigns a custom node to it. It's just a quicker way of doing it. And then we have the generic 
Okay, and then we already covered bind, we covered call, we covered unbind, and then you have unbind all, which basically any events that are bound to our death dispatcher, like for example, this would probably be smarter to do. Once this person has died, or once his boss has died, we probably don't want them to listen anymore. We could have one of ours unbind all the events. Calling an unbind on something that is already unbound is not going to call an issue. It's just going to remove everything. Calling a bind on something, again, once it's already been bound. For example, let's say we ran this part right here, this bind, these five nodes, right after each other. We did it again. It's not going to change anything. You can only bind once. It's just simply going to do nothing. You can't bind it so that way it gets notified two or three times. It's basically going to replace the existing bind. So that is it. That is what event dispatchers are for. It's another way for blueprint to blueprint communication.